video, we're going to look at the Trangier stove and its safe use. You're likely to have two of these for your expedition group, so you'll be cooking for three or four people on each Trangier. Inside the Trangier stove, you've got everything you need in order to be able to cook for your group, including pans, a lid, the burner. So we're going to take off the strap. We need to keep this one nice and safe for later on. We don't need it whilst we're cooking. So we need to make sure we don't lose that, so when we put it together at the end, we can keep everything together. This is the lid, or the frying pan. Inside I've added a few little extra items that are very useful. So I've got my box of matches in a plastic bag to keep them dry. I've also got a cleaning kit with a sponge and a, a soap filled pad for washing up at the end. Again, these aren't supplied when you get the Trangier, so make sure that you've put them in there ready for your use so you know where they are. We've got the burner, we've got the handle, you've got two pans of slightly different sizes. These fit just inside each other comfortably. So if you've got two trangiers, don't mix them up between the trangiers, otherwise you're gonna have problems putting them away. We've got the windshield, that's the one here with these little tabs. And then you've got the base, that's the one with all the holes in it. So putting our stove together, the first thing I'm going to do is to drop the burner tap down through the middle of there. And then the second thing I'm going to do is to clip in the burner. Now we want to make sure that this disc is nice and high and you can see that we can squeeze across there, drop it in and as I let go it will clip itself inside. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put the gas tap through the hole in the side just feeding it through. And then the next thing that I want to do is just to line up to make sure that this is in a direct line towards that hole. So I'm going to turn it around. I might need to squeeze the tabs to make that go round. What that does is it makes sure that the gas bottle is as far away as possible from the gas burner when you use it. I'm going to make sure I've got a nice stable flat bit of ground to put that on. And the next thing that I'm going to connect is the gas. You'll notice, as I put this on, that I'm going to line it up, make sure that it's nice and free-flowing as I twist it on. If it feels sticky or you're having to force it round, it probably isn't lined up. You'll also notice that it is the gas bottle that I'm turning rather than the tap itself. I'm going to do that up nice and tight, and if I hear a hiss of gas, I'm going to make sure that that was turned off. Probably a good idea to check that just before I put the bottle on but it, we normally leave that off from the last time. I'm going to put that in place. If that had been a brand new gas bottle, there is a chance as I screw it on, there's a tiny little hiss of gas because of the pressure, but as you continue to do it up, that will very quickly stop. So I've got everything set up nice and stable. Now I'm going to light my Trangier whilst I haven't got the, the windshield on. It is very unlikely that it's that windy that this gas burner won't light, but before I do, before I light it, I want to make sure I know how this goes on. You'll see that there are three little tabs, cutouts in that shape, and that there are three little notches in the base. In order to put this on, we line those ones up, and then we turn it around about a quarter of a turn, and you'll see those are now attached together, and they're not going to come apart. So I'm going to take this apart so that I can light my gas. My waterproof matches, which I can make sure I always put back in the plastic bag, are good to go. And I'm going to light this from here straight down onto the burner. It would be very tempting to do this with someone else and have one person controlling gas, but we always recommend that you do this by yourself. I'm going to turn on the gas until I can just about hear the gas. Just prepping a match there. I'm going to turn it on just a very, very low hiss. And now I can hear the gas coming out. I'm going to then put my match there. I'm going to light straight down onto the burner and to put out my match. You can see that way. I wasn't doing it up here and then coming down because the wind might blow out my match. And you can also see that I knew how much gas was coming out there as I lit it. Now I can either turn it up or down from this point. But before I put any water or anything on, I need to put the outer on. We need to remember that absolutely everything is going to get hot here. It's all metal and we've got a flame. So I'm always going to be using this handle. The handle works by 
as I let go, the bottom drops down and it opens. And then if I hold it and squeeze it, it closes. So I can get hold of anything just by letting that drop, getting hold and clamping it. So I can put on this now, I put it on, line up the notches and turn it by quarter of a degrees, quarter of a turn, and that will mean that that's now securely on there. Now if I was to put my pan straight in there, there's a chance it's gonna melt a hole in the bottom, even after only a few seconds. That's a very hot uh, burner, and these are only aluminium. So I'm gonna make sure that I put water in my pan before I put it on. So I'm gonna make sure I've got some water in the bottom of my pan. And obviously everything here now has had the chance to get hot. If I need to know whether it's on or whether it's hot, I can feel that temperature right up here using the back of my hand. It's also worth pointing out that these need to be down in order to put these small pans in. So if these are up, you are gonna end up putting your pan straight onto the uh, flame itself. So these need to be down. These would only be up, and you can see I'm using this and not reaching across the top. These would only be up for the frying pan, but we very rarely use that. So I'm gonna knock these down. Again, those will have got hot by now. I'm knocking them down with the Trangier handle. I'm picking up my pan with the handle, and I'm popping that on there. Now, one of the things you will have noticed the whole time that I was using this Trangier and lighting it is the position that I'm in. This is a very defensive position, meaning I can get away from the Trangier very quickly. And I should be in this position right from the moment that I start lighting it. Certainly the worst position I could be in is sitting down with my legs either side of it, cooking between my legs, or in a position like this where I can't get away quickly if it was to be knocked over. We're never going to leave a lit Trangier anyway, so once that is lit or hot, someone is going to supervise that the whole time. Controlling the amount of gas will obviously control the temperature. Obviously I want to get it up to boil as quickly as possible, so now I can listen and look for the cross and the minus. I'm going to turn it towards the cross, the plus sign, the cross, uh, to get that going up as much as possible. I've now got that on full. I need to keep an eye on it though because obviously once that's boiling, I don't want it to boil over and put off the gas, so I can turn it towards the negative, the minus side, in order to control that. And then I can keep it on a very gentle simmer. If I was going to use the pan lid, then obviously I haven't used this so it's not hot at the moment, but I would put it on that way up. By putting it that way up, not only can I hold it with the handle, it means that any steam is released out of the side there. Whereas if I put it the other way up, it's very difficult to pick up. And also, if it boils over, then it will put out the flame underneath. So my water's now boiled, I've done my cooking. At the end, we need to obviously wait for this to cool down before we can put it away. I've got a demonstration Trangier here, which I can therefore use for putting away, so I don't have to wait for that to cool down. So obviously whilst I'm eating, my trangier is cooling down, and here it is, my cooled down trangier, ready for putting away. So if I need to wash it up, at this stage I would wash it up. It's possible to put a tiny bit of water into it and to heat up a tiny bowl of water, and then I could wash everything up inside my trangier. Make sure it's all ready to go for your next meal. And basically I'm gonna take it apart in complete reverse. So I'm going to take off the windshield, I'm going to take off the gas, I'm doing that one slowly. Again, if it was a full bottle there's a chance there was a tiny little hiss of gas as I undo it, but this has got a ball inside which will then pop up and block this. The minute it's off that is a sealed container again. I'm obviously going to take out the burner, I'm going to feed that one back through. Remember when I take out that burner that I do need to just squeeze those tabs to get it out. And it's the burner section that becomes, sorry, the, uh, the base section that becomes the base of my assembly when I'm putting it back together. The, bur the windshield's the next bit to go in. I've got to lift up those tabs to get everything in. The large pan will go inside there. Then the next pan down. 
I'm going to put the burner inside, just coiling that one up. Put my handle back inside. I'm then going to put my matches back inside my bag to make sure that they are dry and ready for next time. I'm going to put my washing up kit back inside it. The tabs are going to go down. The lid is going to go on. And then I put back on the strap and that goes down one side, across the base. It then comes up through this side here. And I do it up with the clip on top, ready for future use.